We are looking at what I call the blessings of his presence. The blessings of his presence. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. 12 to 16. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. 12 to 16. Exodus 33. 12 to 16. Exodus 33. 12 to 16. One day Moses said to the Lord. Moses said, We for a lot of pay. You have been telling me. You have been telling me. Take this evil up to the promised land. But you have not told me who you will send with me. You have told me to go to the land. You have told me I know you by your name. You have told me I know you by your name. And I look favorably on you. You have told me I know you by your name. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways. Fear not, I may understand you fully and continue to enjoy your favor. Make you live more. Don't you care? Make you live. Why do you or your family or you? And remember, Lord. That this nation is your very own people. Moses was asking God. God. Told me that I will lead this people to the promised land. And you said you are look favorably unto me. You have looked favorably unto me to have selected me for this purpose. But Lord, you also know that your people know that you are asking me to leave. But I've been asking you, Lord, who will you send with me? Who will accompany me on this great mission? Verse 14. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you. Moses was asking God, God, on this great assignment to lead your people to the promised land. I know you, according to you, you have looked at me favorably to have chosen me for this great task. But I cannot do it alone. And I've been asking, who are you going to send to go with me? And God replied Moses, I will personally go with you. Moses, Moses, and I will give you rest. And everything will be fine for you. God understands one thing. That the only way Moses can be successful. In this assignment that he has given him. Is if he, God, personally goes with him. That is the only way he can have rest and be successful in that assignment. Beloved, do you realize one thing? 
that your success in life in business you know what she as a parent I got be obini in your journey you know in all that you do in life it is solely dependent on you having God's presence with you without God's presence you cannot hope to be successful The mistake that many believers have made over the years. And many of you are still making. Is that you believe that once I have this person with me. Once I have this person on my side. I'll be okay. That's a lie. The only person that guarantees your success that if that person is the only thing that guarantees success on control of one and allow you I show you in life like is almighty God if he is with you no ne be all alone you about what we do right Man, forget it too. Apart from the fact that man has not even finished taking care of himself or looking after himself. Man is also very unstable. And completely undependable. Yoruba people will say, Yoruba man saba, we pray, it is the world that says this crown is befitting. And the same world will say the crown is no longer fitting. So for, put, for you to put your confidence in man because with you, or not rather than your confidence in God being with you you'll be making a very big mistake one of the things that God said to I know that I'm the one that's going with you. If you are going to be successful in this job, and in this assignment, you are hearing me this morning. Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Moses said, Thank you, sir. He said, But, sir, I know you said you will go with us. But I just want to say something. If you don't personally go with us, please don't let us leave this place. If God is not with you in anything this year, don't make a move. Moses Are you hearing me this morning? It's a new year. to is a new terrain. It's a new territory. 
But we don't know what lies ahead. Don't take a step. Without being sure that God is with you. Moses said, Lord, the only way people can know that you favor us is if your presence go with us. Then people will know that you have set us apart from all other people of the earth. The difference between you, a successful man, and the one that's not successful, is that the one that is successful enjoys the presence of God. Look at your life so far. Have you been successful? In certain areas of your life, where you have excluded God, and you believe that you can do it on your own, have you been successful? Unfortunately, when they tell you to include God, when they tell you seek the face of God, when they tell you don't do anything without God, you say they are con- trying to control your life. As we enter into the new year, like I said, it's a new journey to a new territory. The unknowns are that are ahead of us are quite challenging. At the same time, back on their way. They are adventurous. They are adventurous. Beloved, this is what entire life journey is all about. This is what entire life journey is all about. Though challenging, but full of adventures in many territories. Anyone who wants to be successful in this journey can only do so if he or she is armed with the presence of God. Challenging territory, unknown, full of adventures. You can only come out successful in this journey only if you have God's presence. There is a serious thing for you and I to work with God in this new year. That is, if we want to achieve success this year. From what we had in the prophecies, the Lord says this year is full of uncertainties. That's enough to tell you and I that we need God's presence with us all the time. He says this year there will be a lot of fraudulent activities. 
there will be kidnapping. There will be stealing. All manner of things. They need why you and I must constantly have God's presence with us. Before the end of last year, the federal government issued several warnings to general public. Of some fake financial investment organizations. And how they are defrauding people. It is not only financially based organizations that are being used to defraud people. But there are other schemes as well. Money Through the phone. Through the internet. I don't know. I don't know. And so on and so forth. As sad as it is to say. What is And this is very sad. That even religious bodies. We are lesson, Papa. I'm talking about churches. Are being set up with only one objective strictly to defraud the unsuspecting people in the name of religion. Now, this just for the highlights. Why it is very critical for you and I to have God's presence this year more than ever before. It says no marvel. That Satan disguised as angel of light. And his ministers, as ministers of righteousness, as ministers of righteousness, who go about opening churches today. Even in the name of church or worshiping God, we need God's presence. So as not to be in the wrong place. It is very bad that the humans, most sincerely believers, don't ask God for his input on every decision. Not what I said. Decisions. To this. Every decision you take in life. And should I? And should I not? Most times, what we want is God's approval. On every decision we take, we just want God to rubber stamp it. Whatever we decided to do. When I say on every decision, there are some decisions that seems as if I don't need to ask God, it's harmless. But that decision that you think is harmless can overturn your destiny for life. Let me give you two examples. Debbie's friend who they went to school together suddenly came from America and 
And maybe they got to they got they link up again through Facebook or any of these social oh, yeah, or through another friend. Yeah, Debbie, how are you? I'm coming to Nigeria. And Nigeria. she lands in Nigeria. What's it? This in Nigeria. Oh, we are organizing some things. Some party. Some get together. I hope you will come more. You have to come more. We have to see. Are you ready? Are you ready? For years, I've lost touch with this person. Excitedly. Based on what she knows of her in the past, even regardless, she decided to go. Because as far as there's no need to ask, is it not just you know, this is not just Lagos Island? And she goes. In that part, in that gather, you know, you don't want to see Sibyl, that that is where Debbie's enemy. Oh, she will be a baby or tar, Debbie. We meet a man that will destroy her life. You buy, buy your egg, do you know how many women? How many sisters? How many men? Have to, have, because of such, to such uh, steps, their life have been turned upside down. Some men, the wrong men, we impregnated them. And that was the end of it. Their life finished there. Some men people who defrauded them. Amen. Back on the on the one you be to pay. Some got there. Amen. They be got disease that they were carrying for the rest of their life. No matter by the church you are here, one. Are you following me this morning? She and Bami Bolaro, ye. Am I making sense to you? Sure, I mean you are be. What to you? I see what. What's the big deal? It's nothing. Those who are careful I want you one case, Sarah. to make sure that they don't take any step without God into, into this world are considered as fools. If you see a man or a woman who enjoys relative peace without any tragedy, without any fraud, without any disappointment, without you will one thing you notice about that person is that you don't take any step. That God. Another thing you notice about them. Oh man, they don't share case in power. Ali, not the kind of people that people see on his account. Your money be anti bubbly. I want to go to I want to retire. They are usually considered as a man. Can get me? I want you to retire. Can they are there? It's up. Are you telling me this morning? Am I making sense to you? Sure, I mean, why it is very critical for you and I to have God's presence this year. More than ever before, people are desperate and we go to any land to make money. Unfortunately, most of us who call ourselves children of God don't take our time to 
if you are still at the bury lion wall alone if you do anything that was she on come you can't enjoy the presence of god oh legend but do you allow you alone if God is not in agreement with you where you are going, be alone, but Allah will see or to a fresh be with you. He won't go with you now. So how can he protect you? How do you enjoy how do you want to enjoy his protection? About something that he does not have his approval. Did you ask me? At worst, at best, hey, to that you say God show me a sign. <laughs> Am I most of these signs that we ask God to show us? Why you know? Are they not enough? Why we already predetermined that maybe this is how it will be. But the Should I change jobs? Show me a sign. Which job should I take? Show me a sign. Why should I go to school? Why should my child go to school? Who should I marry? Who should my child marry? Should I travel? Show me a sign. In each of these instances, we want God to show us a sign. And any kind of sign will do. Let my phone ring now. Within the next five minutes. Can you hear me? Can Moses also wanted God to show him a sign. Moses also wanted God to show him a sign. On one occasion, yeah, Moses got alone with God. He got alone with God. Away from the rest of the children of Israel. Oh, Lord, I want more Israel, you to seek direction from God. It's not as if Moses had not seen indicators along the journey. He witnessed some very remarkable visual demonstrations. There was a burning bush. The staff that became a snake. The pillars, the pillars of fire leading the crowd by night. And pillars of cloud leading them by day. Don't forget manna from heaven. That fell each morning. Despite witnessing all these things, firsthand, Moses still wanted for that clarification. Regardless of these signs, Lord, I've seen it for clarification. In Exodus 33:12. Moses prayed to God and said, You have been telling me, Take this people up to the promised land. But you have not told me who you will send with me. This was after he had seen all these signs. Of the Lord now replied to him, My presence. Shall go with thee, yo, my bow, Lord, and I will give you rest. Most of all, this to me. It is not just enough for these signs. I have to be sure, Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm very need. I love you. Presence is with me. You allow your own work to do, me. God not only personally led Moses into the nation of Israel. 
he was always there to provide for them as well. To meet them at the point of their need. And most times, all we, at the best, what we do is ask for a sign. You know, a couple of times, when I want to make a move, I want to do something, maybe going out, or visiting, or anything. One of the questions I ask myself is this. This place that I'm going, is God going with me? If anything happens to me on the road, what would I say? You go out at night, you go out at day, you go out at noonday. But do you ever ask yourself each time you go out? Is God with me on this journey? Has God sent me on this errand? Do you actually sit down to ask yourself that question? This party that I'm going. Am I sure God wants me to go? Do I need Is this what I should be doing at this time? Do I called my son. I sent him a text in America. In America. He's in Nevada. The brother is in California. So I sent him a text. Where would you be spending Christmas? He didn't reply me. And I sent him this text based on what God told me. Based on what God told me. I said, could have told him directly. Straight. Don't go anywhere. But I wanted to explain to him the reason behind why I'm giving that instruction. So I wanted him to tell me where he wants to spend Christmas. He didn't reply. The next thing, the next time I heard from him, he was calling me from his brother's place. Oh, I'm with Olu now for Christmas. For Christmas. In my mind, I said there is trouble. Because God has said, he should not go to his brother for Christmas. I should mass alone. Two days later, this was on the 24th. Two days, 26th, I woke up to a quarrel between the two of them. He went on a 500 kilometer miles of miles journey to his brother to go and spend Christmas with him. I was planning to stay there till the new year. But on the 26th, he had to leave. Because there was quarrel between the two of them. If he had replied me, I would have told him, don't go. Told that I needed to 
I'm concerned. I don't want this boy to go. We but I from. need to explain to him so that it will from. not be as if I'm creating a rift from between two brothers. Mofeda, I was but but he's not supposed to go. Mark, we are called Lossy If I gave you that message, say I'm wicked. How can pastors say? Or if I say to you, the mother, tell your son not to go to the sister's place. What is pastor trying to do? Immediately. Let's say, let's say. Where is Jessica, I raised a prayer team for them. And I called them to start praying for them. Immediately. Let's say, let's say. Inside of me. For many of you, when I tell you what God is saying, and instead of you appreciating it, what you do is to get angry with me. You really don't know. Because many of you cannot see beyond your nose. And when they tell you, you are knocking your head on the wall. This happened to my children. Thank God for that intervention. Because the junior one said, I would never talk to my brother again. But God quickly intervened. I called my pastors as well. Did I not call you, sir? Do you know how many times when you take wrong steps that I have to quickly stand in the gap and begin to pray? Meanwhile, why you are busy getting angry with me? If I leave you alone to that step, some of you will not be alive today. And some of you mothers don't even appreciate what God is using his servant to do but, by giving instructions to your children concerning their ways of life. Thank God for that. Ele da wa koma ma se da wa da bu katawa Do you understand? Yo ye 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 bi I tell you something this morning that I've never said before. Mo so nkan ti won ti so when can read telephone la ro ye 24th of December. Yo jo kan le logun December. It's always a day that I would never forget in my oh, life. Because that was the day that my mother died. Five minutes to Christmas. She died. October 24th. October of that year. She celebrated a bad day. And we were there with her in first stack. And while she was gathering her grandchildren and everybody to go and take photographs. She didn't do anything elaborate. Oh, it was just a pilot thing. And the Lord told me, if only 
she had not done this part thing. But I spent the day in my presence on the altar. That was all I had. I was a young prophet then. I didn't know much. If only, what does this mean? Then when they are going to take the photograph, the Lord said, you better take this photograph with her. Because this might be the last photograph. I immediately rejected that did not that like, like, I didn't even take the photograph. She was well okay. 24th of December that year. Shortly after that, strangeness came. She didn't see the end of that year. There is a mother here in this church. She wanted to do her service yet. She insisted that they must do it for her. I sent a word to her. Don't. Don't. She really did not do anything to you. She just did ram and did some parlor thing. She did not ram and did some parlor thing. She did not ram and did some As the last guest was leaving that day. She fell ill. 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 She didn't survive that illness. Because Are you following me this morning? Share and buy me a lot of Sometimes when I look at some of you, my spiritual children, that when I speak to like this and I see your heart hard what is this saying it started again the only thing that comes to my mind what have you done to the devil what has seen done to the devil that the devil is insisting that I must destroy this person because if not when you hear such words like that it's supposed to make you fear and mellow but rather say so I'm asking, what have you done to the devil? That he says, I will make sure that I destroy you without listening. Even when I talk to you personally, when it's more like I'm begging you, when everybody can see that I'm talking to you out of love, for you, you are saying, no, 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 no. What have you done to the devil that he wants to destroy you? Whether you understand what I'm talking about, I don't know. If somebody really understands what I'm talking about this morning, do you understand what I'm saying? Can you feel my frustration? Yes, sir. What have you done to the devil? What have you done to the wicked parts of your father's house? Where is where is it that you have offended? That has made sure I say that you will not listen to reasoning. Rather, when they are telling you what is right, you will just become angry. Who have you offended? Who have you offended? Are you following this money? What examples have I not given you to help you to understand? I've stripped myself naked. I don't have any secret. I have not told you. I have not tell you just to help your understanding. But do you understand? Which 
which father will be happy to see tragedy before his children avoided when it can be avoided if my joy is not something that you give me I don't solicit your money I don't solicit anything from you other than your well-being. If for one reason out of your disobedience you are not in well-being, then what is my gain? we can't be without God's presence because all this journey all these escapes all these things we do sometimes when I look at some of you my spiritual children I feel like asking the question what is your confidence because even me, I don't have that kind of power. I will not even dare do the things you do. But I will not even dare do the things you do. I was coming on, on 31st night. We were going home. I was telling this an ID. I said, if I was driving alone, I will have felt maybe there is something strange to me. Because the place, everywhere looks strange to me. I said, ah, but ah, this is the place I go to every day now. What happened? Then I realized. When was the last time I went out at night? So the night seems strange now. Because I'm not used to the, the, the terrain again. Because if I'm going out every day at night, I will, have, I will be used to it. But because I don't want at night. See, many of you, you come at night. You, you, your night is your day. Even in this present situation, where do you have the energy and the strength and the power and confidence? In these terrible times. Even just flat tire alone. In the wrong place. Can you predict where your tire will go down? All these words are everywhere. The other day I was going to I was I was in the I lectured to we passed this was at one o'clock in the afternoon. And I said to me, go to Antony. But I said at this place, that place is far. Sometimes you know, even as sons of God, you, you, you take you, you do some stupid things. Which was what I did that day. I said I'm in Lagos. So I went through the place. I got to Akogbon. I was on Marina. When this way came to me. I said I don't have. I said, God is my witness. I don't have. You know what he told me? Open your wallet. To be sure that you don't have. I said, what do you mean? He said, I said, open your wallet. I asked him three times. He told me three times to open my wallet. I was not the only one in the car. I'm a man. Oh. All you see said to me. You better look for money to give him. This is the price for you not listening. What will happen next? Will not be 
I had to beg, so please, do you have any money? One, share, bear, he said, I have 500. Bear. I said, don't, just bring it like that. that. Mo, mo, mo. When I went down to give you the 500, bear, for the one I buy it. he looked at me oh, well, buy it. to say whether he should accept or not. Go, 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 go. But thank God the, the event could move. Traffic moved, so I moved. One o'clock in the afternoon. When I told somebody this story, he said, ah, hey, hey. Hey. I don't pass that place again. One day, after music service, he said, I don't pass is there an idea we are inside the car? On no, Marina, the car just went off. But as God will have it, a man from the cantonment was driving behind them. He just parked. He said it's a very dangerous place. Before you know it, those boys came. And they started looking inside the car. The bag and everything. And they told them, we are coming from church. As soon as they heard that, they said, okay, all right. No problem, we will help you. We will help you push the car. We'll you. But at least they have a place to say they are coming from. From church. Where would you say you are coming from? And where would you say you are going? And did God send you on error? Do you know how much God forbid, it will not happen in Jesus' name. That mother comes crying to me. Pastor, come and see my child. Pastor, come and see. Hey, he went out. Oh, she went out. This happened. I will just say to you, because you failed in your duty. What were you looking when the child was going out? I told you one time. So if back you back. have to guide the door, no the tea, like no, I will guide it to what you are doing now. The only thing I owe each and every one of you oh, is the truth. Oh, no, to talk to you which is what I'm telling you. If you dislike me on account of this, it is okay. Let me ask you one question. And I want you to think about it. Imagine your first day at school with a very campus and you are looking for a map to know where every uh, the place that is department of the places are and then somebody just came don't worry about map i will personally take you to everywhere so you know every place which one is better using a map or a personal garden that will take you all over the place of course a personal garden that is why you need presence of God and not a map are you following me this morning if you are hearing me shout hallelujah there is nothing as magnificent or glorious as a child of God carrying God's presence with him. Wherever he goes, doors will open. Favor will be a thing of a, a, a common thing. In fact, beloved, the secret of success, victory, and unusual exploits of true servants of God. Is because they enjoy God's presence. Everywhere they go. That they are shining, they are bubbling, their life is together, everything is working well. 
is because they enjoy God's presence. Matthew 8, 23 to 27. You see the story of the disciples of Christ. Then Jesus got to the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a first storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went to wake him up, shouting, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves. And And suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. Imagine. Jesus was not with them. Imagine his presence was not with them. Safety, beloved, is not the absence of danger, but the presence of God. That you enjoy safety in life. It's because there is no danger. Not because there is no danger. But because you have God's presence. Between here and Lagos Island, there are many dangers on the road. But sin and unseen. But it's God's presence that takes us there and brings us back to Are you following me this morning? When His presence is with you, you have absolutely no worry about it. And this was what Jesus was telling the disciples. Why are you afraid? I'm here. You see why you and I must do everything to have God's presence in our Do you agree with me this morning? Are you afraid? I'm here. Once you have God's presence God's presence no matter the situation no matter the magnitude of the challenge there is no need to be afraid there is no need to be afraid I'm asking you this morning that decision that you have taken recently do you have the approval of God I decided to go into partnership with Debbie. The God approved that partnership. Because if God is not in approval of that partnership, His presence will not go with me. If His presence will not go with me, whatever my eyes see in that partnership, I will suffer it alone. Behind my decision, no sentiment or emotions that has guided decision. If God's presence is not with me, suffer. And I will suffer it alone. And I cannot blame anybody but myself. Many of you this morning are taking decisions that doesn't have God's presence or God's approval. And that's why it's not going with it's you. Not you better reverse now. One of my sons in church is in church this morning. Came to me before the end of the year. He said, Sir, I suffered greatly. 
And I know the reason. What's the matter now? Because I did not seek God's approval. Why? For us, you alone. You can't enjoy God's presence. Oh, lay, lay, you allow your Lord. If you are not a disciplined person, you are not a disciplined person. If you cannot hold your flesh, if you must satisfy your flesh, you are not a disciplined person. The reason why many sisters and brothers are suffering in bad relationships is because they are not disciplined enough to hold their flesh. They allow their flesh to speak for them concerning their relationship rather than God's approval. I must say this, beloved, that I've noticed that one of the ways that the devil has managed to destroy and destroy many lives today and ruining many lives is through sex. There is massiveness, terrible weakness. It's as if all is is I, I don't even know how to describe because if you go to social media anywhere you go to social media everything they do is sexually motivated if they are not dancing with their bum they are showing their body they're, it's as if there is no other thing in the mind of everyone the only thing they think about is sex and you are Old and young, even over 60, even going to 70. Mommies, I used to enjoy one statement that I didn't always make. He said, I've been there, I've done that. We've done. When do you say it is enough? I've done what I say again. Continue to give excuses. Continue to do it. You will suffer the consequences. I can't tell you how many elderly people are counseling. How many old people are okay. not seeing one sexually transmitted disease or not that they cannot speak out. If you like, mm -hmm. if you like, don't listen. Have you put that to ask? Is God with me? Yeah, be like, in your own work, maybe. God is blind, though. Even in the midst of the switch of all the lights, He's seeing you. You can lie to yourself. You can deceive yourself. Something God has revealed to you who is, who is around you. You learned, but your weakness cannot stop you. Do you want to go to the other Is God with you? Do you want to overcome great problems in life? Do you want to overcome great problems in life? Do you want to be successful in your place of work? Do you want to be successful in your business? Do you want to be successful in your academics? Do you want to be successful in life? Do you want to fulfill divine destiny? If your answer to these questions are yes, then you need God's presence. When the presence of God envelops you, there's a special aura that surrounds you. You and the people around you.
They will think that there is something special about you. I thank God for parents. Like my pastors who have from the very early age introduced their children to the need seek in all that they do. One of my sons asked me during the week. He said, I share an office space with some group of my friends on the island when I want to walk out of office. He said, Sir, should I walk with these people? Should I share this office space with them? Many of you will not consider that question very important. Because you have to raise your share. You have to be afraid. We will pay to get paid. I'm just going there to work. But you don't realize one thing. That people who get to know what you do can determine your success or not. Only sorrow, I show you the beauty. Are you following me? Where you walk, who you walk with matters a lot. Oh, she put a kilopo lopo. Who you bring into your life to bring to your business. Some lives are going smoothly. Until they introduce other people into their life to come and complicate their life again. Who you bring into your life matters a lot. Who you bring into your life matters a lot. Who you bring into your life matters a lot. Who you bring into your life matters a lot. Who you bring into your life matters a lot. You find yourself alone. And then you are looking at yourself. In the name of emotion of loneliness. You want to introduce a man or a woman into your life. Because you say you are growing old. You give example of old age and loneliness. You better think twice. Oh. Think twice. So that you don't go and bring someone that will come and complicate the smooth life that you enjoy in present. I've always told you, let your source of joy be in Christ. Not in any man. Not in any woman. Not in any woman. And certainly not in your children. Because I was saying, well, about my children I've left, I'm alone. I don't have joy again. If your joy is in Christ, it will not matter. Are you listening to me this morning? You know how many lives are complicated already? As a result of this decision that they took in the flesh based on the need of the flesh without seeking God's approval. celebrate your bad day. You need to ask God though. Whether you should be out or you be silent. 
Last week Sunday, one of our daughters were to give thanksgiving. On her birthday, the also has brought me the paper. So some person will be doing that. It was right in front of me. I was looking at it. I didn't see it. Can you believe? It was in front of me. Why do you mean when I buy it? I put it like this. They saw me looking at it, but I didn't see. Don't worry. God blinded me that I didn't see. Allah, Mama, my dear King, Ray. People followed that for Thanksgiving. I want your bow for you to wear because I didn't see. The woman was silly. I didn't call her. Oh, my daddy. I have thought that I, I saw it. I, why, why, why I didn't call her? But I didn't see it. Maybe that is not the way God wants it. Maybe that's not what God wants from her. Maybe what God wants from her is a quietness or something very between him and him alone. Maybe he doesn't even want anything, just you and me alone. How do I know? But he made sure that I don't see it. How do I know? But he made sure that I didn't see it. Maybe that's not what God wants from you. I can only thank God for the life of that person. Because who knows? It looks what what's the example in that? Church stands. People say there's nothing on, but who knows? Who Knows. If you are hearing me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is my word boring you? I borrow me so you be. Are you bored? I know this kind of word does not bring out money. It does not tell you that oh you make money. money. But it's what you need. But uh, in this ministry, our decisions are always based on what you need or and not what we desire or what the church desire or what I want as a person. What you need. You come first. You come first at all times. Are you following me this morning? When God said to the children of Israel that he will no longer travel with them to the promised land, that he won't travel with them to the promised land again. In Exodus 33, 4, the Bible says when the people had this, they went into mourning. They stopped wearing their jewelry and their fine clothing. Oh, wow, oh, sure. ah, God, you will go with me again. That's the end of my life. They started crying. Do you value God's presence? Oh. Or you think you can handle it alone? The way many of you behave when you hear words like this. See if you can handle your life alone. But I pray that you will not need to learn from experience. There are some experiences that one does not live to tell this you will experience it all but you will not be able to live to tell this story that's why i'm praying for you because many of you are you take these things for granted and it's all because of your flesh your desire the weakness you have for your flesh Jesus said, yes, we pray. if any man must follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And let me tell you what you must do. 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 Let me t
is your cross. Carry it. Carry it. Are you following me this morning? Carry it. In the name of him for pleasure or comfort, don't go and put yourself into trouble. Moses, Moses, at the point in time, he got frustrated with the children of Israel's stubbornness. There is no a true servant of God in this present day. We will not be as frustrated as Moses. Because people just don't want to hear And the only way I can be here. Some of you can be happy with me. Or we can be in your good book. Is to overlook your wrongs. Overlook your stubbornness. And I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then you pass to be a great man. Ah, and I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then pass to be a great man. Ah, and I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then pass to be a great man. Ah, and I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then pass to be a great man. Ah, and I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then pass to be a great man. Ah, and I agree with you whatever you want to do. Then pass to be a great man. If that's the reason, then he doesn't need to call me at all. He could just let everybody to be doing what they're doing. He doesn't need to call a prophet again. Moses got frustrated with their terrible attitude. Like I'm frustrated with the terrible attitude of someone. Like I'm frustrated with the there are frequent complaints. Like I'm frustrated about the complaints of some of you. Despite all the unprecedented signs and wonders that is all we are witnessing prove of God's presence. Yet they were still rebellious. In my years in ministry, I have come to discover that the most difficult people to mentor I want to show you that are those who are grown and formed in their ways. They are grown and they are already formed in their ways. Now they are coming to know that they are not just Yes, they will gladly and genuinely give their life to Christ. But they will remain stubborn in their ways. They are the most difficult people to mentor. You can't mentor them. They will question God's counsel. Through his servants. They will always want to use their head knowledge. They will hardly show appreciation for the many things that God is using you to do in their life. It's about only what they see and what they want and how they perceive things. Do you know that there are some people, beloved, that you cannot reach one on one? Say, let me just talk to him one on one. Cancel one on one. You can't. Because that discussion will not end anywhere. As you are saying, they are saying. As you are saying, they are saying. So you can't even reach them one on one. Such people. They are saying. The only way you can reach them is on a platform like this. Wherever you are preaching, and indirectly your message is touching them, addressing their ways. And at that point in time, they have no choice but to listen and not talk back. That's when you can reach them. But the worst of them all is even those that you cannot talk one on one even when you talk like this again they are angry and saying what are you talking about which way are you going to reach them again one on one 
We can't talk. Or consider any old. You must have the last say. Unlike this again. Why did you talk? Why are you like this? Yeah, you're angry. Why are you like this? 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 Why are Can you see my frustration, brother? Yes. I'm so concerned about them. I do. Or I'm a little confused. Please borrow me wisdom on how I can use or how I can reach such. If you know anyone that knows, please after this service, I'm open. I need your wisdom. Maybe God will minister, Pastor. This is because I pray for them. Other than me, God to agree with them. I have not been able to figure out the way out. But if you know any other way, please let me know. Yet, I'm so concerned. I can't give up on them. If you are hearing me this morning, shout yeah, out the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so sad oh, that when every other person can see your wrong, you are the only person that cannot see it. It's not a good thing. Just like the children of Israel. Let this service this morning serve as a warning to those who have chosen to remain stubborn and who are always going to question the audacity of the servant of God as to why must do address this or say this. Those who are fond of using their head knowledge. Beloved, this is not an ordinary ministry. This is a ministry whereby we are guided by the by the Spirit of God. We don't do anything fresh. That is what we boast of. And, and that is why we enjoy God's presence. We are standing today because of this. Not because of my head knowledge. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Just like the adults among the children of Israel. Who were the ones that Actually, fought against Moses. People who are supposed to know better. The same problem I'm having today in church. The youth are no longer my problem. But the adults have become the issue. Why are we not doing this? And every kingdom I've been to, we can manage. An average kingdom we can manage. But once we grow above that kingdom at this age, Wala starts. Except few. God was so angry. He said to Moses, These ones, they will not enter the promised land. I will to never be the portion of any one oh, of you in the oh, mighty oh, name of Jesus. Jesus. The promises that God has made for your yeah, life, you will enter into it yeah, and benefit from it in the yeah, mighty yeah, name yeah, of yeah, Jesus. See how you are saying amen. Hey, the person I used to pray for you hey, and see the way you responded hey, to the hey, amen. Hey, hey, down, see, I ran, huh? I say the promises of God. That which He has made concerning you. No power. Not evil. Not even you. And your stubbornness. Is the one who is going to stop you from entering to that promise in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you. Sit down. A joke. At first, I gave God. 
And I remember the word because I know the person. The Lord said, it's someone in this church. The devil is bent on making sure you lose your blessing. Through your stubbornness and your rebellion. And you argumentative spirit. He says, but me, God, I am bent on making sure no, that you that not miss you it. it. That is why I will continue to be on your case no, 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 that you no, have to get it. No, 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 no. How does God appreciate, love someone more than that? When God is on your case, it's a proof of his love for you. You notice, I notice one thing, beloved. There are some of my children, every one of you, I love dearly. Now, I love Debbie. But, I love Sister Bumi too. Are you following me? But you know one thing? By the way, I'm always constantly on Sister Bumi's case. The whole church may realize that I have great interest in that woman. That's why I'm always on her case. The wise one will see that way. Am I making sense to you? Yes, sir. Pastor really loves this. That's why he's always on her case. Debbie will feel that way too. Debbie really loves it. But you see, the reason why Debbie will feel that way, why our own is obvious, that I really love her, and that is Sister Bumi, it's because I'm not constantly on Debbie's case. So Debbie cannot really feel the effect of the love. That's why Debbie can feel that I love her more than I love it. But truly, I love both of them. But that one is more emphasized. Because I'm always on her case. To the better. So it's more obvious to her that I love her. But she's the only one that will not say that I love her. She will not agree that I love her. Because to her, being on her case is saying that you don't love me. The Bible says, Who God loves, it has ties. If you are hearing me, and you think I'm talking to you, shout a glorious hallelujah. Hallelujah. God expressed total submission and obedience to him this year. There are times God will tell you to do something or say something because of fear of what people will say. You will end up not obeying his word. Beloved, my advice for you this morning it's based on what God told Joshua 1, what God told Joshua. In Joshua 1 verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you. Nor will I fail you. As I was with Moses. I will not fail you. I will not fail you. I will not fail you. Or abandon you. Yeah, you know, you Wherever you go. My presence will go with you. Oh, Therefore be strong. Be strong. Bold and be courageous and go about to do what I've asked you to do. If I'm talking to you, hallelujah. Please, for those of you who like to debate the word of God, you like to debate it, please stop this morning. Let us walk to God with God with one mind. Trusting Him that He has our best interest this year. Those of you who are fond of traveling and doing things without seeking God's permission, please stop it. And those of you 
who merely formed me. He said, it's amazing. I told the church. I said, you don't need to tell me. You don't need me. to come and ask me. If at the best, right, you can just say, Pastor, I'm going somewhere. I will tell you about that. We won't fight. And some people ask, okay, Weapon. Ah, uh, you didn't know I was talking to you in in uh, in Paris. I'm sure you know, but they, it's convenient for you. Many people will just come and say, Pastor, I just want to let you know, I'll be going to the village, and I will say bye bye. Then when people will ask them, Ah, you are talking at this time. Is Pastor aware? You say yes, Pastor is aware. One more, one more. I'm not aware. No, no, no. That does not mean that I'm aware. You, you only more. came to inform me. No, no, no. That is not approval. Those no, no, no. of you who have been relying on that, no, no, no. where you no, no, no. just inform me of your action. No, no, no. And I, can I stop you when you say you are going somewhere? I can't stop you. No, no, no. You just told me you are going. No, no, no. And I said, no, no. okay, no, no. bye bye. No, no, no. You didn't ask, can I go? No, no, no. So, how can you not say that I'm aware? I'm not aware. Of. And you know I'm not aware. Because you have planned it. You have skinned it. You have done everything. You only came to tell me this is what you are doing. Don't take that to be approval. And for those of you that always say that, the person knows about it. I don't know about anything. They just told me as they mentioned it to you as well. Are you following me this one? Those of you have been capitalizing on that. Shemi Pastor knows. Some of the things you do, the consequences, they are not now. 10 years, 15, 20, then the consequences will not begin to knock on the door. Then you say at that point in time, I remember telling the servant of God, telling is different from asking. Are you following me this morning? It doesn't cost you anything to ask. You don't lose anything. It's in your best interest. Am I making sense to you? We are like a blind man crossing the road. A blind man cannot see whether the vehicle is coming or not. A blind man cannot see whether only God can know whether the vehicle is coming. And when he says go, it means it is okay. Are you following me? It's not that you cannot cross the road as a blind man, but you have to know the time to cross the road. He just said you cannot travel to the village. He said you cannot go to London. He said you cannot do certain things. But there are times we need to know the time to but do but it. So that to so go and come back safely. And only God knows the time. There is time for everything. He's not saying you will not, you should do, he's not saying, he's saying for now. On the phone, I was listening about you. You can't. And you must appreciate that he has very good reason. And it's for your own protection. If you are hearing me this morning, shout hallelujah. As I round up this morning, My advice to each and every one of us is that this year, let us stop all our gallivanting all over the place without seeking God's presence, without seeking God's approval. Some of us, by our nature, 
we can't sit in one place ah le yo ka le sit kan we can't blame anybody for that ah le den ke le but please boy jowo i just beg you o be yin ni make sure you have god's permission e re pe ni ase olorun lati se don't go into relationships e ma lo se iba se po kankan business partnership e ba da o wo po without for seeking god's counsel like ko bere imoran olorun na so that you don't fail ke ma ba ku na god's manifest presence if our olorun is to the is the key to our undeniable breakthrough oni koko kokoro si aluyo wa ti eni ke ni o le fi dun wa this year lodun yi it is impossible to operate in the supernatural without divine presence yo shuru lati ma se ni agbegbe ti oruke lorun lai je ka ba ni wa laye lorun pelu wa Having the presence of God in the wala ye olorun is what and all the riches in the world o to fun eju gbogbo oro aye yi lo what more than fame oju o kiki lo what more than power oju agbara lo than the world can offer you ti aye le fi fun ni there is no where you cannot go o si bi ti o ni le lo no force that you will not be able to overcome o si o ti o ni le bori when the presence of God is with you wala ye olorun ba wa pelu re to let you know how important the presence of God is yo ba le mo bi wa la yo lorun se se pada kito even something as going to sleep o nkan bi pe e han fe lo sun papa is dangerous o le wu papa in the presence of God ni wa jo ni wa jo lorun the Bible says there is fullness of joy ni ayo wa ni be but out of his presence yo ba si ni waju re there is frustration ipinle mi lo wa nbe multiple demons awon emi okukun lopopo discouragement irewo si sorrow iba no je fear iberu sickness aison sin ese disease arun distress nira depression irewo si okan and death ati iku the question i would like to ask you bere ti mo wa fe bi wa do you have the presence of god with you je o ni wa la yi olorun pelu re bi if your answer is no ba pe be ko ni down re or you are not sure abi ko da loju then anything else o ju ko won lo this year lodun yi make sure you are armed with god presence always ko o fi wa la yi olorun ha mura lodun yi david knew the importance of having god's presence david mo ko la pe ki olorun wa pelu re that's why he cried lo bi ke wi pe In Psalm 51, verse 11. Do not banish me from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. This is a very powerful prayer, beloved. For those who are expecting to experience success this year, it is a prayer that you should pray regularly. We need to have God's presence. Let it never wear you alone in our lives. No aye wa. It's a wonderful experience. It really to get ya no name. And that presence has to be in our life every day. O si gbore ya ki wa laye ko ma wa no aye wa lojo ojumo. The next time I will talk to you on this subject. But out on bars on lori akori yi. I be talking to you about the conditions for God's presence. Mo so kini awon alale to ro mo iwa laye Olorun. The characteristics of God's presence. Awon ba se mo ki la mo pa we wa laye Olorun. And the capacity of God's presence. Ati bi iwa laye Olorun se ni agbara to. This is where we end this month. Bye la ta no do la ro yi.